Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 61 of A Letter to the King. Um, Letter to the King normally covers the PvP action going on in Naval Action, but for the last half a dozen episodes we've been becalmed by the um, never-ending, it seems, wait for the wipe where we reset the server and split the server into a global and a Euro uh, split in the PvP realm. Um, I wasn't going to do a letter to the king this week, but um, because I publish it in two or three places, it's probably easier for me to put out a really quick one, just to say there's not much going on. Um, in theory, the wipe should happen in the next three days. Um, so in theory, the next letter to the king could have some actual action to report. It's so close we can almost touch it, I hope. What's been going on on the test, but very little fixes and tweaks, couple of patches. Um, they are putting in a item, uh, at the moment it's a redeemable on the test bed, that will ease national transfer, or treachery as we prefer to call it. Um, they've not put in raids, so raids is is it's, it's further down the the list of things to do on the backlog. Raids, fixing up the UI, adding in some new ships, etc., etc. Um, the big question, I suppose, you need to ask yourself if you're a PvPer, is do you go to global um, or do you go to Euro? The fundamental difference being that Euro will have um, boundaries on when you can agitate a port into hostility and, and pretty much it's the 30 degrees of longitude from say London to the eastern side of Europe and they're trying to work out a sort of time slot that means that between around 6-ish p.m. and around 11-ish p.m. you can set a port up for a biffing um, now, obviously, if you're on the Greenwich Meridian, um, 6 p.m. to you is good, but then 11 p.m. is 1 a.m. if you're closer to, say, Ukraine or, um, I don't know, Italy or something. Um, so that's how Euro set up global, I'm hoping, will have no such limits on it. Uh, where will the population go? Well, I think a lot of what was in the previous world, the European Eastern Alliance, the French, the Swedes, the Spanish, um, they're all going Euro. The Danes might be going Euro as well. Um, and certainly a bunch of Brits who like to play in those times will be going Euro. Um, global, the Americans, a large lump of Brits, potentially some Danes, potentially some Swedes, we don't know. Um, I've stated enough times I think this is a terrible idea and they should have come up with a mechanic to provide a global game. Um, now, where should you go? Well, it's your call. All right, I'd go where your mates are going. Um, if you don't have any mates, uh, go where you think you'll get the best fun in your time zone. Um, not that being mateless means you're perhaps motivated by fun. Um, you could wait and see. However, if you redeem your skills and, 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 and crafting XP on one server, it won't be available to you should you decide to move and go to the other server. You'll have to start off as a little... Scrubby scrub muck scrub scrub with zero zero zero. Um, I think I well, I'm not think I'm going to be going to global just on principle because I want it to be a global game. I live in a far flung part of the world, so my life is different than yours. If you live in London or Paris or Barcelona or Rome, uh, having a game where most of the biffing is just after you've had your, your tea. And before you go to Bobies would be fine. Um, but for me out here in the far flung Netherland, um, I like games that give me action all round. I mean, to be honest, once Arena comes out, which will be sort of World of Warships, sort of naval action flavour, that'll be a great dropping game for an hour. 
or whatever that you can get some action whenever you want but as far as an MMO is concerned um, you know I would have never have played a, a version of World of Warcraft that only let me raid on or, or only let me PvP on somebody else's uh, diary um, so the game isn't big enough for regional servers right now anyhow I'll be going to global uh, I might find that there's stuff all action on global, so I might end up on Europe, or transversely people in Europe might find that it's too annoying for them, and they'll end up on global. We don't know. Uh, the game could converge again. We don't know. Um, so make you have a think about where you want to go, where are your mates going. You should probably have thought about this already. Um, now, big differences, I reckon. Um, because you can only teleport between ports the outposts that you've established. You build a ship in KPR, you want to defend Bridgetown from the dirty Frenchies. You're going to have to sail the 90 minutes to Bridgetown, set up an outpost there, leave a ship there, um, and be ready to use it. You, um, so what you'll find is that the, the best thing the Frenchies could do, for example, um, would be to knock the Brits out off the map. Now this is a pre-reset map, so there'd be uh, Brits here and Brits here, I think. Um, so the Swedes and the Frenchies should knock the Brits out, and immediately they've shut the Brits down from being able to attack their homeland, as it were, without doing a 90-minute sail to set up hostility, and then sailing the 90 minutes again, and sailing back and then sailing back there the other day. So everywhere is a bit like Bermuda now, unless it's next door. And to that extent, probably the first thing you should do in your alliance is work out where you believe your forward operating base should be and get ships there. So, for example, if the Brits decided they did want to carry on the biffing down in the Antilles, um, they need to send enough players to set up outposts over here and park ships there, etc., etc., uh, transversely, if you want to defend your area, knock out the noisy neighbours as quickly as possible. So, so for example, French held Tiburon, knock that out straight away, and now the Frenchies have got ages to come and attack the Brits. Um, I think the Antilles will be a hot spot on Euro if we assume that the Spanish, the French, the Swedes and the Danes are going to be biffing each other, which we have to assume. Um, I think this is quite a nice little area. It will have a bit of Danes, a bit of Spanish. A few of these were Spanish ports initially. Uh, some Frenchies, even some Brits. So I think this will be the hotspot on the Euro for Biffing because everywhere else is too splattered across the map. Uh, and the Dutch can come in on an angle from their uh, homelands around Willemstad. Um, I'm not sure where the Dutch are going to go. Um, I think they'll be split, but their player base was so weakened. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure where it will reconstitute, to be honest. Um, I, I think borders are going to be creeping forward. So let's say the Brits took Tiburon. Um, they might have Operation Haiti, where they literally move from port to port. Now, of course, all of this assumes you can raise hostility, because if the Frenchies don't come out to defend on the Brits are going to have to do it very slowly by killing AI fleets and of course the AI fleets along this coast sometimes they're not French they might be Spanish or um, Dutch or something and killing them although hilarious and fun of course um, won't raise hostility against a French held port uh, which means once again as is always the case after a while everybody will be killing the Spanish um, so there's an interesting wee thing. Um, I think the RVR will now be a much slower thing. Uh, there has been some chattering on the forums. Um, there's another player who I, I don't know if, if, if it's great minds think alike or fools seldom differ. But we both hold a very similar view that it would be really good if raids let you attack the non-capital port. So for example, if you were going after... Um, the area here just sort of south of the French capital you could raid a couple of the British ports and that would raise hostility you know as if it was a hostility bomb 25% 33% whatever the number would be so you would do a couple of raids and perhaps they'd be like the old flag system where you would buy a flag and you, you could only buy flags perhaps within a certain distance of where you buy it from or something like that 
Um, and then you could attack it. Now, whether or not it has AI in it, if there's no players, we don't know. But I, I'd like you to be able to attack these things. This would help us raise hostility on your capital target. And then it would be scheduled within the permitted time zone on your server, be it um, happy, open, global, or Sharia, Euro. Um, and that's about the size of it for this week's naval action. Really not much to tell you. Um, I've logged on a couple of times to the test server, but there's nothing much new on there to stimulate me to biff around and such a low player base, like 20 people on when I'm logging on. So that's it for this week's naval action. Really just a placeholder to let you know that there's very little to say this week. And um, I will see you on the oceans and I'll catch you.